Now, I have here a very, very interesting project that has been brought to me by one of my uh, alumni friends. And this is an extremely interesting but very complicated tree. It is, I think, a type of variegated San Jose because the habit and foliage is like a San Jose except that it has got these yellow specks on it. Let me just say something about the variegation in trees. There are quite a few trees that are variegated. Variegated means you get yellow and green. You get it in nasturtiums, many uh, herbaceous plants, uh, not often in trees, but you do get it in trees. Some of the camisipris, Lawson cypress, you can get it variegated. But for some reason, in oriental folklore, which is the uh, basis of most of the bonsai tradition, variegated plants are not often used. You know, these specks of yellow, it's not a pure green. I don't know why that is. Maybe because it could be a bit distracting. So I just say that in passing, but that is not the main consideration in choosing a plant. Okay, now, this plant is interesting, and I will just get um, my friend Shobo to just say something about it. So can you just tell me the source of this and the history of this plant? Uh, so this was a, a guy who is based somewhere close to Luton who uh, got this plant and he then he had planted it on the ground and he uprooted it and put it in a bucket and then he decided that he wanted to uh, make this into a windswept design and after a couple of months he lost sight and lost interest and then what he did was he was he put it up on Facebook uh, that he was throwing it away or somebody who won't actually come so I drove all the way down to Luton got this train to my car and drove back and for the last nine ten months all I've been doing is I've just been feeding this plant, keeping it in the corner. Uh, who did it. some of this? I, I noticed that there's some wiring and uh, ginning and all that. Is that your work? Yes. So I've been trying to go with the same logic that if I were to make this into a windswept, how do I make one front? Yeah, I can see why the thinking of the windswept, because it sweeps to that side. Yes. Uh, but for my thinking, so what did you have in mind? Just sweep all the branches there? Actually, I was thinking of making a couple of dead wood and removing some of the branches and making much more. Or the other option is to take it off the pot and make it into a cascade with that being the apex. So these were the two ideas I had when I was growing. So I was actually growing it more into that direction than into this. So this side I've kept and I, the growth has been in this direction. Okay, okay. This plant is growing well. Uh, obviously nothing's been done to it since. Well, this, as I say, is a very challenging plant. And whenever I get a complicated and challenging plant, what I do is I leave it around and I look at it. I remember I used to have a very complicated yew and a juniper. In fact, we have lots of complicated trees here that are left lying in the nursery. And people wonder why they're lying in the nursery. And there's a good reason why I leave it lying around the nursery. It's left lying on the nursery because Every time I pass the tree, I look at it, and in my mind I say to myself, now, what can I do to it? You know, can I do it this way? Can I do it that way? So the thought process is always there. So it's in the back of the mind, and it can go into the subliminal um, uh, recesses of the mind, and you begin to say to yourself, is it possible to do it this way? Is it possible to do it that way? So all these things are turned around in your mind. And because trees can be complicated, sometimes it is not a good idea to take rash decisions. I know that I can work fast and I can think fast when it comes to doing bonsai. But there are instances where a bit of thought uh, might be useful. So, as my friend Shunga said, there are many possibilities. Because the plant is growing this way, the natural 
a tendency for most people is that it could make a nice windswept going that way. Um, all right, it is possible, but if it is going to be a windswept, I think it needs to be rationalized a bit because it's too fussy, there's too much going on in the tree. You can't see the actual tree for all the density of branches. Let's look at it this side. There is so much going on here that it is a bit confusing. There's this long branch going there, so there is a possibility of a cascade. But as with most of these things, there are many, many possibilities. If you can turn it this way, it can become like a more like a conventional tree. So let's turn it round and then lift it again. So this part is quite interesting. That could be made like an almost like an informal upright tree because of that beautiful bend. There are some bends there and then popping up there. So it is exceedingly complicated. Let me take you through what I'm going to do by way of analysis. I will begin by taking out some of these. I know you've done all this wiring. This is a bit confusing. This is a bit confusing. I don't think we may need too much of that. Uh, I know that young branches can be wired, can be wired. So I don't get rid of thin branches. It's the thick branches which very often are the difficult ones. But looking closer at the tree, if you can bring the camera close, I can see that there are like two trunks here. So there's a case of splitting that and making it into two trees. See, it's not really, it is connected, but I think it can be split and made into two. I think you have seen some videos where I do in fact do that. So that is a possibility. If I split it, I will get a very interesting tree with just this part and the other part can make an interesting plant as well. Now let me just see if I can, if I didn't split it, what could I get with that? If I didn't split that, I could get that as a head and this coming down this way. So that is also possible. See, splitting it is irrevocable. If I do it, I can't rescue it. I can't change my mind after that. So that becomes quite a drastic choice to make. But if I made a separate tree out of it, I don't think it would be anything spectacular. It may be just taking a problem out of the way. So this becomes a tree, this part, just this part becomes a separate tree so this you could get a windswept from that. If I can just bring a bag This bag trick is very, very useful. I've shown it to you before, but you will appreciate it when I show it to you now. See, I've now isolated this tree. So this can form a separate tree. So this bend is quite interesting. So you could get an interesting tree from that. Might even be possible to bend that and could even get a sort of literati from that because of the interesting bend. So this would form one tree. Let me just put another bag just to 
make it even more clear. So what I want to emphasize really is that although bonsai is a form of gardening, it is much more than that. It is a very cerebral activity where there's a lot of analysis goes into it. So that is what I can separate out. And this is going to be one tree, which is not bad. It's quite interesting, in fact. Quite interesting. So that makes the problem less complicated. If you have too much complication, you remove part of it, the rest becomes slightly simpler. Do you not agree? So that is the way I'm thinking. Okay, so that is one option. But as I said, because it's quite a drastic operation, you can't have recourse to using it for anything else. But if I kept it, what can I do with it? It is so complicated there. And this part at the bottom is very, very complicated. It's an absolute tangle. You talk of it being an octopus. There's like two octopuses in there. So since this is not my tree, I always respect the owner's choices. I know I can only guide you so far. So you got to tell me whether to separate it and then decide on this. Do one thing at a time. What do you think? I think we should separate it. Separate it, okay. <laughs> Make, because this is looking very pretty actually, just this part. Okay. And then we can think about So I've that. taken it out of the pot and I've just got a little axe and I'm going to try and split it. Let's see what is the best position to work without blocking your view. Oopsie. Sometimes just by stamping it and tearing it apart. I think I may use an old saw. Just stay there to initiate the cut. A lot of people ask me why I don't use new saws. I think using a new saw is a bit dangerous because it will blunt it. to do it slowly. I think I may have to cut the soil again. Ooh. 
You can come and see what I'm doing over here. Reminds me of Solomon, you know, you remember the lady who brought uh, the twins or something and wanted to cut it in half and separate it? Must be like that. Cutting it in two. There you are. With a bit of patience as possible. There you go. Two trees for the price of one. How interesting is that? And plenty root, plenty root. So there you are. This is more manageable, simpler. So this is one tree, one project. Uh, this is not that difficult. In fact, I'm going to let Shomo decide what to do so that he can practice his thought process. I won't tell him what to do. He will have to come up with some ideas. Simpler now. Now let's look at this one because this is going to be easier to analyze now that I've got that debris out of the way. I'll just put it in a supporting pot so that it stands up. So now that we've separated the tree, as I said, that first part is more manageable. Then let's analyze this one. It's all about analysis analysis so you can see why bonsai is such an interesting thing and if you have an analytical mind uh, it makes it easier you've got to think out the process so let me just look at it from every possible side remember what I said every tree has more than one solution Every problem has more than one solution. You can't just say that there is only one possibility. This has got many, many possibilities. So, the trunk base is quite interesting. We could make it into a very short tree, dumpy tree. See, these branches will regenerate. It's going to be grown upright. See, I can see a very interesting curvy bit there. So that looks very interesting. If I can use that for some purpose. The base of the trunk there, because it's thick, that also is very interesting. All that is probably useless. If you look in there, let's go close in there. Can you look in there. The question is how to get the best out of it. Even this curly bit is quite interesting. This curly bit is quite interesting. Complete tangle of branches.
Can you see anything? I'm thinking if you get rid of many of the small ones and keep the big ones, it could be like a shark and it could be like a forest. For rafting? For rafting, yes, and raft. It was a shame though. Because some of the curly bits are quite interesting. I know what you mean. The other thing which I'm thinking is that if you want to create a cascade, but then again, then a couple of those will have to go, the ones which are wired and all because... Yeah, those are nothing. They will definitely go. They will all have to get rid and then it will yeah. be a much cleaner cascade. Very tricky one. I'm still looking at that trunk there because that is beautiful. It's quite a thick trunk. I don't want to waste it and hide it. No point hiding that. Right, it's too complicated. All this seems to be pretty, uh, I wouldn't say redundant, but I don't think we need it somehow. Okay, this is very interesting, so I will keep that. This is not very interesting, so I'm going to make a gin out of that. So, let me just show you what I do to make a gin. So to make a gin, I'm going to tear the wood to short here. So I make a partial cut. Do you want to do it? I can do it. Okay. So we make a sloping cut yes. halfway and then we tear the wood there. But we don't need such a long branch, otherwise it becomes difficult to tear. Let me just shorten that branch a bit. Usually with workshops, if you're here to learn, you need to practice it. Otherwise, if you don't practice it, then 
you will never learn. Okay, so wear a glove so that you don't cut your hand. Okay, okay. So we cut a sloping cut halfway and then we tear it there to get a tear. Okay, that is about enough. You're pulling it downwards, eh? so you're ripping it. Okay, maybe cut a little more, otherwise you may not have enough here. Cut a little deeper. Remember, it's cutting on the pull stroke. Okay, now, now that should be enough. Now you pull it. Maybe take it on the floor. It's easier to do it that way. Put it on the floor. Don't, don't, don't eat it. Don't. Take it and put it on the ground. Easier. Easier to handle. It's a bit awkward like that. I can see you struggling. Okay. Lie it flat and now you're going to just tear it away. Stamp, stamp with your foot on the trunk. St yeah, over there. And just rip it downwards. Rip it downwards like that. See, like that. Like that. Like that. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. That's how we get a tear. Okay. Put it back there. So we're trying to simplify the problem at every stage. So now we got rid of one. You see that? That's the effect you get from tearing. You see how nice that is, huh? So that's how we produce the gins. Huh? So you learn something there. Okay, so we got rid of that. So I will now analyze the next step. So we could still end up with a windswept this way or a semi cascade because these are quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. Which side? Looking that way. But I want to show the gins, you see. It's possible. Don't worry. Anything is possible. As we say, we keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. The trouble is I can't see enough of the trunk there. So I know you like this windswept. I'll try and get a windswept out of you. It's not a style that many people tackle because it's difficult. It's possible. Okay, we do another gin now. If we do a gin here like that, partly cut over there and we rip it again. Somewhere here, okay. sloping cut. We need to go about halfway. When you're halfway, stop and then we will pull it. Don't cut it right through. Now stop. Now stop. Now we're going to rip it forward. You can do it on the ground if you wish. Yeah, very good. Beautiful, beautiful. That's how you do it. Huh? See, that's how Jinzen did. Huh? You've mastered it. Very good. Okay, now you see it's becoming even more uh, sort of resolved. We've resolved something. See, now it's more easy to visualize what we are trying to do. Before it was very complicated. Okay, we take a break. If you can just unwire those things you wired because it's a bit confusing. Yes. So I've spent the past half hour just thinking of all the different options. The options are complicated and confused because we have these long branches. This long branch, this long branch at the back, and this long branch at the back because it's curvy has some interest. This is sweeping that side, that has some interest. This little top here is curvy, that has some interest. So I was thinking, if we make a windswept, uh, make everything go that way, just gin most of the branches, and that would be one solution. The other solution, because of those 
curvy branches, we could make it like a semi-cascade going down like that, but gin this, that is possible with a little head there. Not that convincing because this is springing up again. So a semi-cascade won't work. See, these branches are very straight over there, long. This also, this back branch here, that's very long here, and then it curves. Like this one, this goes straight and then it curves. So they're all not very interesting things. So in considering all the options, we got to look at it from all different sides. If I made a tree like that, like a multi-trunk tree, that is also possible, you know, hope that branches will grow again. So uh, just shorten the branches and let all the small shoots grow and get a triangular tree. That is possible also with a big base, but you don't want a tree bigger than this. So a lot of these have to be cut off and you hope that new branches will spring again. I still think that the beauty is in the trunk here. This is a very interesting trunk and I don't want to waste it. The concentration should be around there. So this is causing real, real problem for me. See, this is interesting, but it curves here, but it's too far away from there. It curved there, it may be more interesting. So it's too long a branch to do anything with it. So what are the other options? We've got to look at all the different options. There are about six or seven options. Uh, one possible option would be All right, if we put it upright like this, I'm just thinking what we can do with that. See this curvy little branch here, this is very cute like that. It's a ready-made curve there. This could make the head of a tree. These could be used. And I still want to concentrate on the trunk there. In fact, we could look at it from this side or that side. But these for me are too long, too long, much too long. I bet you viewers are trying to analyze what I'm trying to analyze, what are the different options. But as I say, difficult tree indeed. But although these big branches there look interesting, I think somehow they won't fit into the scheme of things. So if we were to shorten those or eliminate it, again, this is where this famous bag trick, although I can visualize it in my mind, there's always a case for using this bag trick. If you use the bag trick, you will start to see the options emerging. So if I use that as the apex and wire these branches to this side, I could get like a triangular shape, like so, and then gin the rest. That could be interesting. So like a semi windswept with lots of gin and still have some green to make it interesting enough. Uh, pity I was going to use these. I don't think somehow they would fit into the design. And it could look nice from the other side as well. So we've got some very, very major decision to make. That means those big branches at the back, these two branches will have to be shortened to make gin. This one and this one shortened to make gin. So, because this is not my tree, I've got to ask the owner what he wants to do. I've made a suggestion, but the choice is his. That means 
this we are going to sh maybe make a gin, a bit long gin here, cut it there, rip it in the front because that is probably going to be the front, it, although it doesn't matter which front it is. Maybe pull it this way and shorten this gin to about there. What do you think? Oh, it will look nice. Huh? It will look nice. Uh, you take quick decision. Okay, right, I'll let you do the gin. Let me just short the branch and make it easier to pull. Just hold the camera for a while. Okay. We're going to shorten it, okay, you filming? Yeah. I'm going to shorten it so it makes it easier to pull. What a shame. Got rid of that. And this one we are going to maybe shorten there and then you can still make the cut to pull it. Less is more. Okay, so we've reduced it a bit. You're beginning to see it. The more debris you get out of the way, you begin to see the solution. So I suggest if you make a cut somewhere here, you can either do it with secateurs if you wish. You don't always have to use the saw. Make a partial cut like that, sloping away. In all my books I explain it. So you make a partial cut like so. Let me do this one, then you can do the other one. So once you've done that, and then with the gin pliers or any other tool to grip it, we will tear the wood away. So having made the cut, we're going to Oh, it's still too much. So it's just to facilitate the tear. Oh God. Harder than I think it was. Maybe I'll make it shorter, then more leverage. what we want, to be able to tear the wood. And this one, if I make a cut there, then you can have a go tearing the wood as well. You can go have a go at pulling that. Bricks, yeah, good. Tear it away. Yeah, pull it as far as it'll go. That's it. Perfect, 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 perfect. See, that's the effect you get from tearing the wood. Huh? So that's how you make it. So we hold the camera. I'll just show you again for the benefit of those who are new. Then you reduce the tip to make it more of a point. I'm using a root cutter, or you can use branch splitter as well. So that's how we make the gins and then because this is a live branch, the bark will come away very easily. It will come away very easily. So we can refine these in a moment. Even this one. Do it bit by bit. Don't do it in one fell swoop. Just do bit by bit to tear away. Maybe like a ten millimeter thick. A 
and then we remove the bark from there. See now it's beginning to look like a bonsai straight away just by removing those thick branches. So as we say sometimes you are very greedy, you want to keep everything. It doesn't always work like that. These we keep because we can make gin with those as well. Even like that it begins, begins to look interesting. It begins to look very interesting. A lot of possibilities. And even these we are going to gin the this one. So gin it up to there. I'll just stay there. I'll This is a very useful tool to have. See like that, so you just remove all the bark. Beginning to see something now. I think we don't need these either. See, even these you can gin. With little kitchen knife also you can use quite good pen knife, kitchen knife. See all these little bits of your gin looks very dramatic. So all that will be ginned. This whole thing from here, all that is ginned. Huh? In fact I'll give it to you to take home and you can gin it. That also. So, the gins have been uh, scraped. We still need to make some adjustments to it. They're just roughly peeled back, but we haven't refined the gins. I think I want to create some basic shape to the bonsai so I can see where I'm going. So, I will just wire the branches and uh, we will take it from there until we wire the branches and put them in place we won't get an idea as to what it would look like. If only you could fast forward the six months, I guarantee you it would look quite different because the foliage would have grown more. But till then we will just have to visualize what it looks like.
And then the central portion, I'm going to give more twist to it. So I'm going to give a double coil of wire. So there's quite a lot of wire being used. This is where if you use copper wire, it's a harder wire, stronger wire, but difficult to handle. I don't like using copper wire because I think most of our viewers will find it exceedingly difficult to handle copper, so I don't want to confuse people. So here we are, we've potted it in this temporary plastic training pot and it reminds me of a big needle juniper that I had. So it's got a nice shape with plenty gins and considering what it started off life as. So this is only one half of the tree, there is the other half to come. And I will just turn it around to show you in this case, most of the gins are on this side. You must be asking, why is it on this side? Uh, it is on this side, although we can't see it full frontal. Having them at the back doesn't make it look so uh, obtrusive, jumping out at your face, as it were. So it adds, adds a bit of interest. You know, there's perspective in the gins there. So all we now need to do is refine the gins a little more. And when it's dried, we can put lime sulfur. And I bet you anything in six months time when it gets more foliage it will look a delightful tree. So I hope the owner is pleased with it and we will show you the other tree.